Hello folks. Today I'm gonna start off with rest impact wrestling. TNA explosion. Well that's why well that's why I say it is. January the first, twenty fourteen. The show starts off with Pat Penny and Jimmy Boris. She's the like Jimmy don't <laughs> don't seem to get along with Pat Pat too much. He's here by the orders of Dixie Carter and he's personally personally signing for Magnus. Now I don't know what now I know that Magnus is the champion. But Magnus did not win the championship by himself, but now I get to that later. So Samoa Jordan Kazarian is facing each other tonight. I hear that they I hear that they have known each other for a while. They know each other. They have history with each other. They've known it. That means they have history with each other. So they take. So the new. So the old rivals take on each other or companions or whatever. So more Joe won. Now they're showing a preview of how Magnus won the ch World Heavyweight Title. The reason why I don't like the way Magnus won the World Heavyweight Title. Jeff Hardy was close to the World Heavyweight Championship. Only thing that m messes it up was Aaron Carter, Dixie Carter, and of course Rockstar Stud. First of all, Rockstar came out here and pushed the pushed the ladder down. Jeff was this close to the title. Rockstar Stud, he was, Jeff Car Hardy was on the ladder, Rockstar Stud pushed him down, pushed him off the ladder. Then allowed Magnus to climb up the ladder. Now, here's my thing. If Magnus was a real technical wrestler, and no disrespect to you, Magnus, if you was real a real technical wrestler, you would need help. That's just like the Stephanie and Triple H did Randy Orton when he screwed Dan when he helped when Triple H and Stephanie helped Randy Orton won the title. It's the same thing with Magnus. Now let me go on to this old match that they show on this show, which is it's from it's an old match from the uh, TNA lockdown. It's AJ Styles versus Abyss in a steel cage match. Now this match was very epic. When the match starts, AJ was already for him. He was diving over the ropes on onto him. He was on Abyss, slamming him for bars to to the announce table. He accidentally dives him on into the audience and he was supposed to dive on abyss now he dives on <laughs> he was supposed to dive on abyss now he dives on him <laughs> now they're fighting in the crowd they inside a cage he prepared he always prepared his victim with placing a chair at the corner of the ring bringing in a bag full of thumbtacks now all because these thumbtacks is little they hurt like hell. They have needles. Needles like this. <laughs> you see? Then they... In the last, Abyss brings in a chair. Now, brings in a chain. Now, now Abyss starts with the chain. He wraps it around AJ's neck. Abyss and AJ began playing tug while with that damn chain. <laughs> Then AJ gets the boot to the face. Now Bish again wraps the chain around the ring post. AJ fights back and beat him and beats him. Back down and took him in a corner. He had the chain tied up to the thing. AJ blocks ended up blocking his path. AJ jumps over Bish and hits his head on the chain. His head was busted open. He he then he was then picked up by a bitch and thrown up against the gates. 
but then give him the but it didn't give him the win. He began twisting his mean head. I see the way he twist. I see the way a bitch twists his head like this, and it hurts like hell. His big ass hands is all over AJ's head, just twisting it. AJ fought back hard and ended up falling over. AJ gives a bitch a DDT, and AJ's up and going. He continues to knock down Abyss. He gives Abyss a German suplex. Abyss was going to choke slam AJ, but the tables turn on him. Abyss slams AJ. And then he began taking out the bag of Duntex and throwing them out everywhere. Now, you know what Abyss going to do, right? AJ started fighting for his life. Still no use of a bitch picking him up to give him a pile drive. AJ finished him off instead. And fans were sitting up there chatting. Holy shit. AJ started climbing up the cage. Then a bitch throws down a ref. And then follows him. Wow. Now. A bitch. I gotta give it to a bitch. He's kind of smart as a monster. As a crazy monster. A Abyss began wrapping a chain around AJ, hanging him. Abyss grabs him by the neck, and AJ began fighting him off. AJ power bombs him, and AJ wins the match. Next, I'm watching this Dixie announcement. Now, the next show on Impact res Wrestling, there will be a coronation for the new World Heavyweight Championship. I wonder what's the, it, it's supposed to be like a celebration for the new World Heavy Championship. That's what she was talking about. Let me tell you something about Dixie Car Miss Dixie Carter. She turned heel on 19 September in September of last year. When she turned heel, she started bringing in MMA fighters who ain't did shit. Didn't even fight in the rain. Then, come to find out, Dixie was screwing around with wrestling talents. Then, ever since then, Dixie started screwing around with people's career. Messing up Stan's career. Messing up Kranger's career. Even AJ. AJ didn't even get a new contract for TNA. And he, and he, and ever since that, and because of that, AJ has beef with Dixie. Dixie tried to fix it, and now Dixie tried to make, fix it and make it all better by giving him a contract with a whole lot of money in it. And first she gives him a check with a whole lot of money in it. Then she gives him a, uh, uh, I don't know, contract with a whole lot of money in it and a brand new car. You can't bribe AJ Styles. You cannot bribe the guy. <laughs> now... Before all that, Dixie, and you wonder why Hulk Hogan quit your company, Dixie. You even messing with Joe's, some more Joe's career. You messing with, I don't know, what's his, Kurt Angle's career. Why are you, it's like she's playing my games, it's like, I don't know what she's doing with that company, but I'm glad MVP came in and fixed that. But I'm gonna get to that sooner or later. Sooner. Now, on to on to Dixie's heel history. Now we got. Now Dixie makes another crazy decision. She makes a handicap match with Eric Carter and. Rockstar Stud and the New World Heavyweight Champion Magnus versus and the Bromance versus Jeff Hardy and Sting. Dixie, why would you put five people? Why would you have five people fight two people? It's like putting a one soldier in a battle zone with a whole 
with a thousand soldiers. How are you going to survive that? How Sting and Jeff Hardy how Sting and Jeff Hardy going to survive five on two, Dixie? Come on now. Get that crap together. Grow up. And then Eric gets Sting up here. And you wonder why I hate handicap matches. You wonder why. When Jeff Hardy is tells Sting that he's sorry for anything. Jeff, my whole thing is Jeff ain't got to be sorry about nothing. It ain't Jeff's fault that Dixie plays around with the damn company. Then he goes on saying that thing. That's why. That's why. People don't trust Dixie with the with. It, it, I don't know. I don't know what to say about her. He goes on saying, "Now, Jeff, Jeff Hardy was apologizing, which there is no need for him to do that." Then he goes on saying, without Sting, there will be no Jeff Hardy. When it was Dixie Carter's ex, but it was Dixie Carter's accident that drove him crazy. I told you, Jeff, Dixie caused you to, caused you going all crazy. And, and I bet you Bobby Roode went all crazy. And I bet you Bobby Roode went all crazy. And the destruction of wrestling that she has created. Now, Dixie, I want to say something about Dixie. Dixie, to me, reminds me of what they say, of what people say politicians are. Crooks. Dixie is just a crook. To me, Dixie is just a crook. He's playing around with people's hard work, with wrestlers' hard work, playing around with their blood, sweat, and tears. And they let the bad guys have they kick and eat it too. I, I'm s I don't understand why she's doing all this. It's like it's like looking at the politicians playing mind games with the people. Fans are cheating. The fans are chanting Hardy's name. Stain was confused, but yet he he didn't think it was Jeff time for Jeff Hardy to leave. Sting puts his hand on his shoulders and he was like, Hold on. Do not tell me what I think you was go about ready to say. Don't do it. That's his, that is his words. But then Jeff, this, but then Jeff says, I want to stay and fight, man, but the fight's all gone. And then added that he... That it was his last match at TNA. That was so sad. I, I didn't want him. I didn't even want his last time to be this. He was going to leave the building and not return until the light shines on the dark kingdom. So what I'm, what I'm, what I'm hearing that is he might need some time off to reconnect his thoughts. And we, and we focus and figure out what's going on with his life, with himself. Before you leaves, he said, "Creatures, I thank you, and creatures, I love you," which is sweet, but it, but at the same time, it was sad. He then strips off his shirt and his arm socks that he always usually wrestles in. Then he takes his takes Stain's hand and gives Stain a hug, but Stain still don't understand what's going on with Jeff. The last part is kind of sad, and I don't understand what's going on with Dixie. I really don't. Uh, I guess that's the end of it. Hope you like my review. Love you all a good night.